And I'm guessing it's similar to when LeBron was with the Heat, ESPN, they started the Heat Index, which was essentially a LeBron feature. Mike Wallace, our friend, was doing the Heat Index, which was really a way for ESPN to capitalize on the number of people who had interest in LeBron and the big three. And I'm guessing that, you know, um, USA Today has kind of noticed the same thing, which is what we've noticed on our YouTube channel. So we post a video on YouTube about me and Crowder, and we're talking with, I don't know who, um, Aranda Gadsden about Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell. And there's interaction, like there's views, there's clicks. But when we post something about Leo Messi and Inter Miami, the views are through the roof. So I'm guessing, Safid, that that's kind of where USA Today is coming from. They go, yeah, let's assign this guy to Leo Messi because there's so much interest in him. Yeah, definitely. And I'm the guy. <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> it, it, it's really funny. When he got here last July, uh, we started to see the interest. And then I was like, all right, well, he's right here in my backyard. I'm going to start going to some games and and write about, you know, what's going on during the game live. We did, you know, kind of live blogs. So anytime Messi did anything, I would put a couple lines of what he was doing, put it in our story, and people are loving it on Google. Um, and it kind of was a genesis from there, man. I, I think Lionel Messi, he is probably the most uh, famous athlete to be playing in American sports right now. Um, I think he's more mm-hmm. famous than LeBron, more famous than Tom Brady, Patrick Mahomes. A lot of people thinking there's no way, but... I mean, LeBron came to Lionel Messi's first game here in Inter Miami last summer. It wasn't the other way around. Uh, last night during the game, Messi's coming off the field for halftime, and he's giving Will Smith a hug. Um, you think about this. They're going to play a game in L.A. on Sunday. Last year, um, you know, Chris, Prince Harry, Selena Gomez, Leo DiCaprio were all at the game. So it's going to have a huge celebrity impact. Celebrities love Leo Messi. He's famous beyond comparison when you think about sports in general um all over the world man he is worldwide famous he is michael jordan famous i would say uh madonna you think of probably the most famous people in the history of the world you know going you know dating back to the 90s maybe i think messi's probably right up there um with the most famous people so uh usa today our company we we have a taylor swift reporter we have a beyonce reporter a lot of people gave a lot of uh, really hot takes about that on social media. They, they have then, someone dedicated to covering Taylor Swift and yes, someone dedicated to covering Beyonce. Yes, yes, we do. We have uh, we have those reporters now. This is all kind of new in the last couple of years, in the last year actually. I'm um, just trying to take. Are they interested in anyone covering topics. food courts? Because I've always <laughs> said that I that's my beat, man. Food courts. Is there any food, kind of interest in that? Food courts, uh, chili, and uh, bad beats, bad betting beats. Uh, it would be <laughs> it, the Hawkman beat would, would really kill it, it really I think. Would. Who's covering me? <laughs> Who's covering we need to get you? somebody on you now, man. <laughs> got a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> Soffit is like, because uh, I was just looking earlier, and uh, Inter Miami is favored to win the championship this year. Like, does, because I know you love football. We talked about football. You cover football, you know, basketball. Like, Lionel, I call him Lionel because I'm a black it's Lionel. Dude. But Lionel, yeah, Lionel. Oh, Leo. Lionel. Leo. No, I, I can't him. say my Bible. Call him Messi. You just call him Messi. He's, a, he's a one name on he's a one name guy now. On the go. So so does Lionel, because you're talking about LeBron and like Patrick Mahomes, does he make a bigger impact on a team? Like the soccer comparison to a MJ, to a LeBron, he makes a bigger impact on the team winning than those guys doing there and their, you know, respective sport. I think it is a similar impact on winning, and but I think the impact comes from, uh, you know, media sales, all, all these kind of things, jersey sales, attention. Um, you know, Messi goes around here, guys. When, when I'm at Inter Miami, people are driving to the stadium, parking their cars, lining up, and waiting hours, hours for Messi to le- get in his car and leave the facility, and they want a glimpse of him. Messi pulls up in their car. They have their phone out. They're taking selfie videos. He's signing jerseys. I mean, we saw the video a couple weeks ago, guys. Messi's in the middle of traffic, and some guy threw his jersey in the window. Messi picks it up, signs it, smiles, throws it back to the fan, have a great day. 
um, you know, we don't see that with LeBron or Patrick Mahomes. You, you know, people are not lining up to go get any glimpse of them, any chance they get. This is somebody who people around the world who love him have a chance to see him in person, be next to him, uh, you know, maybe not touch him, but, you know, be able to get a video with you, with you and him on, on your phone, something you'll be able to have for the rest of your life. I mean, this is something that we haven't really seen that much in American sports. And, and that's why, uh, you know, my role has been created. And, and, and these are stories that I kind of want to tell, um, you know, in this new position for sure. I want to have USA Today's Taylor Swift reporter on as well. He's in Australia right now, man. He's in Australia right, right now. Uh, what a, Taylor what Swift a and, uh, what a, and Travis so, Kelsey were at a zoo in in, uh, in Sydney today, and he's he's got a story about it. I heard that uh, Taylor sent her private jet to get Travis, who is a multimillionaire, but she sent her jet to bring him to Australia, which – I just don't know how I feel about Listen, it. Man, I can't even get Crowder to, to send me anything, you know, to get the Gulfstream Park. He won't even send me <laughs> one of his drivers. Or Listen, she, she flew all the way from Tokyo to go to Vegas for the Super Bowl. I just want all the fellas out there. You know, if they were willing to do it, they would do it for you. They would do it for you. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know, Safid. I don't know. <laughs> Is Messi, I, I saw that there was some criticism of Leo Messi um, not doing local media. I think it was, um, was it Michelle Kaufman maybe who wrote something who said, well, wait one second here though. There is some sort of unfair situation going on for those of us who have covered inter Miami for a long time and we have no access to him whatsoever. Are you getting access? Is he doing any local stuff? Granted you're national, um, but what what is his relationship with the Miami media and with the 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 niche that you are working on? Yeah, I mean, look, I'm I'm right there uh, with Michelle Kaufman doing stuff. So I'm as much as national stories I'm trying to tell. I'm I'm here as local as possible. You know, in the same press conferences, in the same circles, going to the same practices and games. Um, Messi's got a great setup, man. Uh, he doesn't have to do media. Um, and, and it's kind of a weird setup because it's not something that you hear about, um, in sports, you know, LeBron's talking before the all-star game, um, usually before and after every game, I'm just speaking multiple times a week before and after the Super Bowl. Um, and he was kind of not just, you know, not doing media. He did one press conference, um, you know, uh, about a month or so after he signed, I imagine they'll do probably a, a couple when, when the noise gets a little loud or there's some things that he has to speak about. But um, do I understand, you know, there is a frustration in that comes with that. I think people want to hear from him. Um, but I think a lot of people, you know, Messi kind of just lets his play on the field speak for himself. Um, and I think uh, it's a unique situation. He's got it. He's got it made in MLS. You know, uh, a lot of people will cite security reasons, things like that, too. Like when he goes to away games. You know, you're going to have a lot of people in one little room trying to interview Lionel Messi. It's, it's not a great setup, um, you know, and then, you're, you're, you know, he's a Spanish speaking only. So, you know, you have to translate questions if people are asking him things in English. I think there's a layer of things that kind of go into it. And I think Messi himself, too, he probably just doesn't want to speak so much or have things kind of said or twisted. You lose things in translation. Um, I think there's a lot of things that kind of go into it. Um, you know, for me, it doesn't really affect kind of what I do. I would love to, you know, have the chance to speak to him or, you know, hear what he has to say about certain things and ask him certain things. But, um, you know, sometimes Messi can speak for himself when he does want to, though. And so is, is Messi starting something right now, seeing, seeing like you're saying what he did with Inter Miami, because now like they're the MLS super team, like everybody wants to see, we know the ticket prices go up has do you think he's starting a trend where, like, the Cristiano Ronaldo's? I know Mbappe's my. This is my son's favorite player, and my son loves it. I have. I bought a damn Mbappe jersey. I didn't know. I was like, "There's too many vowels. There's no <laughs> need some more I's and E's in this in this name." Too many consonants. But it's a bunch of consonants. It's it, there's weird names over there. Huh? Why is it two P's back to back? Did I get the right jersey <laughs> right. spelled right? Is this Apple? I don't know what, what's going on here. But do you think do you think Messi's starting a trend, or you think Messi's just doing Messi? Well, this was a trend that kind of happened already in, in soccer. Um, some of the most famous soccer players in the world, when you think of, uh, you know, Zlatan and, and David Beckham specifically, David Beckham was the first one to start the trend when he, you know, left Europe to go play for LA Galaxy. 
Um, so this is something that's kind of happened before. These are things that kind of Messi saw happen already. Um, and, and, and he kind of followed through with this, but this was a really good courtship here. This was Jorge Mas, the, the inner Miami owner. Um, this is David Beckham who's lived Messi's life, um, kind of in the same way that Messi has. Um, this was, um, you know, Javi Asensia, who's an executive with inner Miami who spent 10 plus years with Barcelona with him. There's a lot of people here in Miami that Messi knows that made this very, very comfortable for him. Then the fact that he signs here and then you go bring two of his first you know, teammates from Barcelona, Sergio Busquets and Jordi Alba. Then you go sign Luis Suarez, who was also in Barcelona with them. You got the coach, Tata Martino, who was um, you know, Messi's coach with Argentina and Barcelona. A lot of things here were brought here to make Messi more comfortable in this situation. Um, but this all a lot of credit goes to Jorge Moss, who's the inner Miami managing owner. Uh, this guy had a vision to sign Messi during the World Cup when he knew things weren't going great when Messi was with Paris, uh, Saint Germain. And a lot of people thought of him as crazy, and he did the, the impossible signing Messi here. Um, but he deserves all of the credit. He was at the World Cup, he was at the box in the luxury box, sitting next to Messi's dad, um, you know, kind of during World Cup games. That was kind of the real genesis of all this. Uh, Messi also trained at Inter Miami for an Argentina match in 2022 before this even happened. Um, so a lot of things kind of were put in place. A lot of things were in motion already. Um, but this is it, it didn't just happen out of thin air. A lot of things really were, you know, put into place and fell in place for Messi to land here in Miami. And it's it, all kind it, of worked out in this. Favor. It is pretty amazing. It's still like a pinch me thing where you go, he's playing for inter Miami because even when the, the rumor started percolating years ago, it was like, yeah, okay. And then all of a sudden <laughs> they win the world cup and you're like, yeah, his next team is going to be on commercial Boulevard across from <laughs> Wendy's. Okay. Yeah. We, and, and really, I mean, all credit to Jorge Mas for pulling yeah. off the impossible. I still think about what an owner Jorge Mas would have been for the Miami Marlins when uh, when that <laughs> team was being sold and he wanted that team. But really, it's just a when it's really a pinch me thing for Inter Miami and South Florida. And obviously, you see, like we saw the news this week, uh, Drive Pink Stadium is now Chase Stadium. You go from the naming rights of Inter Miami Stadium going from uh, an auto dealer that really made their bones locally here. They're a national, Auto Nation's a national company now, but uh, to an international banking company like Chase. It, it's really a remarkable story. Uh, probably you gotta, a, you gotta a, think about what they have too. It's like Chase, uh, Chase is, they, they own the naming rights for the Warriors arena. The Golden State right, right, yeah. You know, so. Right, like put put this t Inter Miami on Commercial Boulevard in the same breath as Steph Curry and Clay Thompson and the Golden State Warriors and their arena. It's really it's remarkable. What what will translate though? Do you think on the field? We know that they won uh, last night. What will translate on the field? Is this one of those things where you go, yeah, Leo Messi is going to run roughshod over the MLS and they should be the favorites? Or does it become a fatigue issue? Teams just, hey, we just got to shut him down. They can beat us any other way. We just shut him down. Like, what do you think this path is going to look like for Inter Miami? Well, first, I mean, a lot of players, a, a lot of a, a lot of this is players on the other side are going to get on the field and just be starstruck that Messi's on the field with them. They're playing against a World Cup champion. They're playing against the best player probably ever in this sport. Um, there's an off factor a little bit into that. Then you get to the point where you have to play against him. Um, you know, Messi's very LeBron in the sense that he's better when he's passing than he is scoring. Um, and you saw the game last night, too. He had an assist on the first goal and. He pretty much orchestrated the second goal, too. Um, so even when Messi's not putting the ball in the back of the net on his own, he's affecting the game in so many other ways. Uh, you think about when he first got here, all these young players that we didn't know about, um, you know, Robert Taylor, Benjamin uh, Kramaschke, who's taken off on social media with his own, uh, you know, celebrity and looks. All these guys have played so much better because of Messi's presence next to him. Um, so I think how this year is going to unfold is you got to remember, I think Messi's big goal personally, he wants to win Copa America again. That's going to happen this summer. The first game's in Atlanta. The final is in Miami. Um, they're going to play in this Champions Cup, which is a tournament they're going to have kind of early on 
in the season. I think they're going to, you know, focus a much of their attention on that tournament to win it. Um, after Copa America, that ends in, I believe, at the end of June. July, you have the League's Cup, which they won last year. Um, that's a tournament sponsored by Apple. I imagine he's going to play a lot more of that into it. Um, and then this U.S. Open Cup, they're going to have some games kind of sprinkled in where they – the, the, the soccer schedule is just so weird. It's just so weird. Um, but I would say I think they have a good chance to win this first cup. Messi's got a good chance to win Copa America. And then when you get past July, you kind of see where they're at. I think it's going to be very um, – you know, if you're in the playoff in any in, in any tournament, doesn't matter where you're ranked or seated, I think Inter Miami can, can kind of uh, go as far as they want to go because they have Messi. Um, and because they have these other guys around them and, um, you know, it's, it's the talent is crazy. Did you see him play last night? Like he still looks like he's in the prime of his career. He, this guy doesn't look like somebody who's going to retire anytime soon either. Um, this inner Miami train is going to happen this year could go into next year. Um, I would venture to say a lot of people, you know, Messi had a documentary come out on Apple TV. Um, you know, this week about his World Cup run. And he's saying multiple times, it's my last World Cup. I could see them kind of maybe seeing how much he can play if he can play for Argentina again in the World Cup. Um, but that is what, 2028, I believe? Uh, 22, 25, 26, sorry. So that's 2026, excuse me. Um, I can see this being a three-year window where Messi decides, all right, I'm going to continue playing for Inter Miami. I'm going to go play with Argentina because every time I play with them is going to be the last time I play with those guys. Um, but if I have anything left in the tank for the 2026 World Cup, which is in North America, Canada, U.S., Mexico, I can see him uh, giving it a run as well. And, and Safa, give me give me a, a Channing comparison because I don't know a lot about soccer, but we've joked about Messi playing in MLS almost like Michael Jordan playing at the you know at the YMCA. Like, what's really the comparison? Because to your point, when he plays, he looks like the guys he shouldn't be on the field with these guys. Like give me give me another sport comparison of what is it? Is it Adrian Peterson running through a twelve U football league? Like how how much better is he than the guys in the MLS? Yeah, I mean, look, this is one of the best players of all time, and uh, MLS is a growing league. I, I don't, you know, I don't think people are giving it enough credit as well. Too, um, you know, these guys play. There's a lot of younger players in this league, and Messi and his teammates being a little bit older, there could be some games where you know they just don't have it. The younger team wins, right? Um, I would venture it as, as maybe a little bit of NBA today. You know, it's not so much when you see OKC getting blown out by a team that's younger than them. Okay, when, when you see Golden State getting beat by a team like OKC, you're like, all right, well, Steph, Clay, they kind of had an off night because they have, you know, OKC has Shea Gildress and he's the youngest player. He's the best player on the court right now. I can see some of that right now. Um, but the the tiers of soccer obviously european soccer is the best that's where messi shined most of his life and inner miami is 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 a growing team they're like you know three or four years into what they've done here in mls it is a lesser league yes um they have a chance to do some things and win um but i think the competition has gotten significantly better these teams have gotten better throughout the years too and there's going to be some games where they play against teams that are a little bit more put together um and, and have some challenges but um, at the end of the day, when they have chances to score and they do make those scores happen, uh, you know, the weight of the competition is going to weigh down on other teams for, uh, you know, against them. Safid Dean, you can read his stuff in USA Today. I mean, it is messy, messy and more messy. And uh, the appetite for it is insatiable from what we've seen. So uh, Safid looking good. I'll tell you what. I appreciate it, man. Taylor uh, Swift or... Uh, uh beyonce reporter goes on vacation do you fill in like could you just jump in and, and just start following taylor around I'll, I'll give you a call and we'll we'll get you. i do a lot of the uh coral springs um food court and we'll see how that I goes. be on the ronald oh. mcdonald beat i'll just oh. follow ronald mcdonald around the country wherever <laughs> i know he's who at. should be scared is travis kelsey and jay-z if taylor <laughs> swift and beyonce is around soffit that's who should be worried <laughs> 